If you went back about 100 years in time, the magician of the day was a gentleman called Maskelyne. Now, Maskelyne, of course, performed large and small tricks, but he was also famous for something else. And uh, we've managed to find a little clip. I think he would call it the Dancing Delph, I think he called it. And we'd like to thank the Magic Circle for the uh, loan of the film because it's very, very rare indeed. Now, last year we had a puppet on a bar and it was about 150 years old and that had been reconstructed uh, by a gentleman from America who tonight has brought with us a piece of apparatus used by Maskelyne. Unbelievably, he's made it back to its original form. He is, of course, John Gorn. <laughs> you may about psycho because that's his name isn't it yes this is psycho made in england in uh, 1878 and uh, was uh, in a museum over in uh, canada we found it over there and refurbished it a lot of people thought of course because of its size there was somebody hidden inside it can you spin it round yes. and show that there couldn't possibly be a bit more just a touch more that's beautiful now, and all, this was all rusty and... Yes, but this is all the original mechanics in here, all brought back to, to original specification. And of course, a, a lot of people thought because it was mechanical, they could see all this, and yet it did the most mysterious things, that there was something spiritual about it. Yes, they, they really thought that this thing had magical powers. How did they prove then that it wasn't connected to any electric contact? Because they had electric, didn't they, in those days? Well, yes, but uh, they would start off with this little footstool here yep. and mount it on the footstool, make sure that it wasn't contacted to anything. Yeah. It was above the floor. Then this glass column to prove that there are no strings, no wires, no electrical connections. Yeah. And, of course, back then they didn't have radio control. No, well, they wouldn't, no. And then finally, psycho. It's interesting, isn't it, that the, the name Psycho, which we always think of as magicians uh, pertaining to this puppet, was, um, well, it's not a puppet, it's not an automaton, I don't know what you'd call it, really. It's, it's got this, this name now that's been used in horror movies, rather sadly, don't you think? Yeah. Yes, but the name goes back many years. Yeah? Well, switch it on, then. Well, masculine would start off by saying, Psycho, are you there? Really? Yes. I have always fancied myself as a masculine. Be my guest. A short version. Um, <laughs> Psycho, are you there? Ah, he is. He is. That's amazing. And he also used to answer questions with this, didn't he? Yes, the bell. With, with what was it, one ring for yes and two for no? Correct. Yeah, and, and three for maybe? Yeah. Okay. Is, it, is that correct? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's good, that, isn't it? Well, I'll ask a question then. Um, <clears throat> was John uh, Neville Maskelyne the greatest magician of his day? Well, there's no arguing with that, mm. is there? And, uh, <clears throat> am uh, I the greatest magician of today? Well, thank... Oh. Oh, oh, thank you. Well, at least I got a maybe. Yes. I got a maybe. That's nice. He used to take people on uh, at a very human level, didn't he? Playing... Uh, do you yes. play cards? Whist. He does. He plays cards, yeah. That's yeah. what he was known for. I got a double answer then. <laughs> this is weird. Um, OK, we have two people from our audience brought on by Debbie McGee. And would you two just care to sit down here? And I understand you, you understand the game of whist. Yes. This is, we're going to knock out whist, trumps, you know, like we always used to play that at home. And what I'd like you to do, what's your name? Julie. Julie, take the cards and you shuffle them. And while you're shuffling them, uh, then pass them to this gentleman. What's your name? Mm. Bill. OK, Bill, you shuffle them as well, because Julie's got a habit of throwing them around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you play a lot, do you? <laughs> OK. <laughs> now, so you, the cards are being shuffled twice, all right? That's important. Now, of course, Psycho can't hold a hand of cards, all right? What he does is he... Can you take the, uh, the, the bell off? 
Now watch this, because it's really very clever. He takes the bell off and he has um, a rack. Can you see the rack over there? Yeah, that's where he, he puts that on, on the... Uh, on that. This is really amazing. And, and the cards now can be slotted into here, all right? But first, of course, um, when you've shuffled cards, you, are, you have to cut them. Would you like to cut the cards? All right, that's the idea. And having cut them, one completed the cut, would you like to take them and deal them? So that way I can't cheat, you see. And what you do is you deal one to Julie, one to Psycho, one to yourself, seven cards, and let me explain the game. Now, of course, this goes seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, when, you, when you're playing the full game. Um, would you accept the fact that if he wins this first hand, he could beat you anyway? Because, you know, if he gets more tricks than you. Yes. Yeah, good old, <laughs> good old, all right? How many is that? Have we got seven? seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for Psycho. Turn the next card over and let's see what trumps. Can you put it there so we can all see? Hearts are trumps, OK? And what you do now is you pick your hands up, you're allowed to look at them. I'll put Psycho's in here with your permission, Joan, because I... I, you know, answer myself as masculine, and, uh... This is Psycho's first performance in over 90 years. 90 years? 90 years. It's amazing you could remember the first routine. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? There you go. You now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in a row. And, uh, Bill, it was, wasn't it? Yes, Bill, right. now... You both shuffled the cards and you've cut them and you dealt them straight away. Right. You could have cut anywhere and hearts turned up trumps, so do me a favour. You decide, will you play first or you first or Psycho? Let's see what he's got first. See what Psycho's got A cunning got first. plot. Yeah. He would like to see what you've got first, Psycho, <coughs> so would you like to play a card? Wow. He's thinking. That's the one. The jack of spades has been placed first. You have to follow that, Bill, as you know. If you have a spade, you have to follow it with a spade. He's laid the ace, takes a lot of beating. Bill wins the first hand cycle. Not a good play, OK? Now, Bill, it's your turn to play because you won that first trick. A diamond, followed by the king of diamonds. Psycho to lay a card. Okay, six. six of diamonds. He obviously can't beat it. Julie, that one's yours. Your turn to lay. Remembering you, you're trying to beat him. And Julie's laid the queen of spades. Wow. It's your turn, Psycho. Ah, uh, a trump. Oh, yes. He's got, he, obviously, he's got no spades, so he's trumped you. If you have any spades, you have to follow as you know, Bill. But if yeah. not, well, yeah. you could try to beat that, the uh, trump, then. Trump to beat him, well. And you haven't got a Trump to beat him? Oh, so, dear. We'll throw it. No, well, that means that Psycho's won a hand, all right? Yeah. So that's one each, and it's Psycho to play. You sure about that one? OK. <laughs> Ace of clubs. Oh, you won again, Psycho, so away you go. He's really getting a grip of the game now, yes? Remembering that both of you had the chance to... You've got to get another card out, Psycho. <laughs> now, you've got um, one each, he's got two. You shuffled, and... and uh, oh, I think... The three. He, yeah, I think he's run out. That's the uh, three of diamonds. Oh, Bill was down there like... like. Oh, <laughs> Julie, yes, you came in really good. That was good, that. Now, you've got two, and Psycho's got two. And you've got an eight of hearts has been laid. Can you beat the eight of hearts cycle? Okay. Yeah, he's thinking. Yeah, he's thinking yeah, about he's that one, wasn't uh, he? he got <laughs> it. Only just beat you. Got a nine. And can you beat the nine? No. No? So he's in with a three. Yeah. And that's three to cycle. Now you could draw with cycle here, but I somehow think <laughs> that knowing this character, you won't. Mm. Can you play your last card, please, cycle? That's a jack of hearts. Can anybody beat a jack of hearts? No, you can't. So despite the fact that you shuffle them, you shuffle them, you cut them, you dealt them, Psycho came in with four ahead of your two to your one. He's just amazing. He is Psycho. Well, John, 
you've done an amazing job of reconstruction because it's not connected to anything. Nothing. And yet, he had a power beyond the normal one-to-one -one of the human. And what we've got here is a set of numbered cards. Now, you won't know this at home, but the audience here, about 300 in the audience, saw us make absolutely certain that no one could see what a gentleman was writing down. We told him to write down a multi-digit number, and he's sitting in the audience there someplace, and can you just put your hand up and say, yes, I'm here. Where? Oh. Yep, okay. Now, I want a nice, loud, clear answers from you, sir, when we do this. Uh, first of all, you had a free choice of any, any digits at all. And, and you've kept that a secret to yourself. Yes. Now, why these cards are, are so interesting is if you look at this old photograph, you will see there Keller, the man who used to present this version of Cycle, uh, handing it over to... Harry Houdini. Houdini. And the cards are in the same order. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. This is real magical history, ladies and gentlemen, because Cycle, unconnected to anything, is now somehow going to try to find out what is in that man's mind. First, think of only the first digit. Only the first digit. And when you got really concentrate. Uh, He's taken a two, is that right? Yes. Please? Yes. Yes, good. Now think of the second digit. He says it's a seven, is that correct? Yes, Paul. Yes? Yes. Good. More. He's thinking. Yeah. Right next door, an eight. Two, seven, eight. Now, is that the total number? Correct. Yeah, two, seven, eight. Are there any more numbers in your number? Yes. How many more? One more. There's one more number, Psycho. If you could give me that one. Uh, psycho. What's Paul, that? masculine yeah. would have said, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> I feel really silly. Um, <clears throat> uh, psycho, would you give me the last number, please? Is it a four? Yes, Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, an unknown number an unconnected psycho, but nevertheless, he found that the total was two, seven, eight, four, and this beautiful creation is the work of, of course, John Gorn. Thank you. And that's masculine magic.